Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming to my class today. Um, I'm so excited to teach you guys a little bit about the history of Dia de los Muertos and really show you guys how I like to celebrate um, the, this culture and really just decorate the beautiful tradition of Dia de los Muertos and Sugar Skulls. Um, First, I want to just open it up and talk about the Day of the Dead. It is such an important day. The Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos, is an ever-evolving holiday that traces its earliest roots to the Aztec people in what is now Central Mexico. The Aztecs used skulls to honor the dead and, and millennium before the dead, before celebrations even emerged. Skulls like the ones placed on Aztec temples remain a key symbol in a tradition that has continued more than six centuries in the annual celebration to honor and commemorate those who have passed on. Um, I'm really excited to share this look with you guys today. Dia de los Muertos is on November 1st through November 2nd, so hopefully you guys pick up some really good tricks and you can actually um, recreate something like this to celebrate and honor the culture, cultural excuse me, culture, and the um, people who have passed on in spirit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about our products and how we get started. Yes, it is such a beautiful look. I absolutely love it. It looks like the Disney movie from Coco. Yes, the Disney movie Coco is actually based off of Dia de los Muertos. Um, so if you wanna watch a really fun, family-friendly movie about the tradition, then definitely take a look at that. Um, first and foremost, I am going to be doing half of my face today just because I have an hour and I want to make sure I can answer questions and teach you guys exactly how to do this. But just remember, if you want to do a full skull, you totally can just replicate on the other side. So to start out, always use a primer. That's super important. You want to keep your makeup on. Believe it or not, I actually really like to use the CC Dull Correct from Herborian. It does something for my skin. Um, if you are doing something for Dia de los Muertos or in any kind of face paint where you're putting a lot of makeup on, you do want to have some kind of a barrier between your skin and the makeup because it's not going to be the easiest to get off. And if you're not used to wearing really heavy makeup, then it can kind of feel like a mask. I also really like to use this one because it is a little bit light for me. Now that we're heading into the winter and fall season, um, I'm... <laughs> I'm not as tan as I like to be, not as bronzed as I typically would prefer. So this works um, to kind of lighten me up a little bit because it is used for color correction and I'm not the type of person you would necessarily use it on to color correct. It does make me lighter. So it does kind of help for that skull pale effect um, and that works for like skeletons it works for ghosts anything that you're trying to be a little bit lighter i would highly recommend going for a primer that kind of helps get you to that stage makes life a little easier and i'm not going to go completely white for my skull today i'm also going to be using um some foundation oh, one second my computer charger there we go don't want to die in the middle of the class <laughs> so um, now you can see my complexion is a lot more dewy. It really feels good on the skin. This primer is non-comedogenic, so it's not going to clog the pores. It's safe. Next, I'm going to reach for my Becca Ultimate Coverage Foundation. Now this is a shade that is about one to two shades light for me. Um, it is very heavy, so my recommendation is to mix it with a little moisturizer, um, maybe the CC cream, or you can even mix it with a little bit of a highlighter, a liquid highlighter to really kind of bring the um, coverage down to your liking, whatever you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and mix in a little bit of this Becca um, Shimmering Skin Perfector. And I typically don't recommend doing this for um, anything else except for something that is a little bit heavier makeup. But I always say don't paint on your foundation. You don't need that much. In this situation, we are going to paint on our foundation. So don't mind me. I'm using number 775 to paint this on. It is a little smaller than a foundation brush. But my rule of thumb, even when doing beauty makeup, is... The bigger the brush, the bigger the mistake. 
So if you want to make small mistakes, use a small brush. So I'm just going to go on here and I'm just going to start to paint this on. I mixed everything on my palette. And I'm just going to paint it on where I want it. I am using it lighter than my skin tone, but I'm not doing complete white. If you want to do complete white, honestly, that's up to you. You can. Um, I'm not going to really go around my eye area too much simply because I'm going to be making that part dark. So there's really no point. But as you can see here, just that this is a little bit lighter, it's already starting to create a little bit of uh, definition, a little bit of a highlight on my forehead that's going to make me look a little bit more skeletal. And I'm just going to go down the nose. Like I said, I'm only doing a half face, so not going to worry too much. If you want to use a beauty blender, you can. You can also use your finger to really get, get it, everything blended. I have really dry skin, so I do have to be very careful if I blend my foundation with a brush. Um, I typically only blend someone's foundation out with a brush if they're not dry. If they're really, really dry, it can actually cause the makeup to lift, and you'll find that everything you're putting down on your face is just coming right back up, <laughs> either on a sponge or on your brush. So if you are having that issue, you definitely want to look into like, a little bit of skincare to fix it. It will remedy it quite a bit, but um, try using your finger or try using your hand. It will help a little bit. So now that I've got my foundation base on, I'm pretty happy with it. I am gonna go in with a little bit of some white regular face paint. You can get it anywhere. The, uh, I think I'm pretty sure the Dollar Tree has some. I'm pretty sure that you can get it at any Halloween store, but you just wanna get something white um, just for your highlighted areas. I also wanna mention that when you are doing something that's not normal for you, um, if you're using a lot of glue, if you're using adhesives, if you're using like face paint, anything thicker than your normal makeup, you do want to be careful. You don't want to ruin your good brushes. So I typically will say for something that's not foundation, don't use your nice brushes. Just go to like a craft store and get like, you know, like one or two paint brushes. That way you don't really care about them. If you ruin them or they get stained, they're like a dollar. So you don't have to worry. Um, there is a lot of stuff that you can utilize the brushes you already have, your regular makeup brushes, and I highly recommend that if possible. But again, if you don't want to like ruin your brushes, you might want to get yourself either a separate set or something a little more crafty. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start to apply this white on the high point of my cheekbone and my brow bone. I'm also going to come down a little bit on the mouth here, and I'm gonna make sure I get my jaw. Now I don't want everything to be super white, so I am gonna go in with a beauty blender. A little goes a long way, as you can see. Since I have my base down already, I don't have to worry too, too much about my makeup lifting or it coming off, um, but it can happen still. I can see a little bit right here in my, where I have a little bit of eczema where it's starting to lift. So I may need to go and put a little bit more foundation there. But the lightest part of your face should really be the highest points of your bones. Your bone structure is gonna tell you everything. If you're just trying to create a regular skeleton or a skull, um, my best advice is to print out like pictures of the anatomy and have them in front of you. Because if you're not super familiar with your own anatomy, it could be a little bit difficult. But once you understand your bone structure, it's really simple. You really just fo follow the lines of your face. So 
If you don't have white, again, you can totally go in with like the lightest shade foundation that you have um, or something that is, I would say at least, at least two shades lighter than your natural, natural skin tone. All right, I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna use a product that you might think is a little unconventional for this, but it actually works really well. So I'm going to grab, oh no, where did it go? Here it is. This is the Brow Gal by Tanya Crooks Toffee Bronze Highlighter Pencil. So usually this is like used to define eyebrows, but it has two, it has two things on it. It's got like the highlighter area, and then it's got this really cool um, skin tone or light brown shade, like kind of like a nude pencil. And this is really, really good for anything that's like a half face or even drawing things out before you go in with black. Because remember, black is a dark color. If you go and put that on immediately and you mess up, it's gonna turn everything gray. So you wanna kind of know where you're putting things before you just go in and put them down. So I'm using this nice brown pencil to really kind of show the half face that I'm going to do. And this technique can be used for any kind of a half face, not just a skull, sugar skull. And I'm just going to map it out like that. Next, I'm actually going to go ahead and use this brown pencil to map out where I'm going to have like my eye socket. You actually need to find what's called the orbital bone, um, and it's about here, but if you put your head back and you close your eyes, you can really feel where your natural shape of your you know, eye socket is. So as you can see here, I've got this nice shadow. Now, with any kind of effects makeup or face paint, you're doing exactly opposite of beauty. In beauty, you want to highlight all the shadows so that there's no shadows on the face. You want to fix those things and blend them out so everything is balanced and symmetrical. With special effects, everything is completely opposite. You're actually gonna highlight all the worst features that you have. So in my situation, I've got these lovely designer eye bags. I have this really beautiful hooded eye and you can see where my eye socket is. Um, and it naturally makes me look a little dark, but in this situation, I'm actually the perfect candidate for a skull because you can see the natural shape of my eye very easily. And you can see it right here. This is where my natural eye socket would be. And you guys can start to see the shape already coming out. And the reason it's easier to use some kind of a brown pencil is because again, if you mess up, this is gonna be a lot easier for you to clean or fix than black. You're gonna be sitting here messing with gray colors all day. Now, some people um, like to get their eyebrow covered so they don't have to do their eyebrow. It's up to you what you wanna do. If you wanna have an eyebrow on, you can. Remember, you're supposed to be looking like a skull. So if you did have an eyebrow and you were a skull, it would most likely be a decorated eyebrow, something that someone would have decorated on a skull or put on a skull, it wouldn't naturally be there because if you were dead, you wouldn't have an eyebrow. But that's up to you what you want to do. And I can, I can actually see that area. There we go. Do you guys see that? It's like the perfect skull eye. Um, and then you can also go another step and start to do the other parts of the face. So that way you have a template to follow. So typically with a skull, a lot of people just make this flat here. It's not flat. Our temple is very visible um, if we don't have our muscles and our skin and everything. So it's a pretty big indentation here, but it's not a hole like some people think it is. It's actually just, just some shading. So again, don't feel bad to use a brown pencil. You could even probably do this with contour, to be honest. I just think that the pencil's a little bit easier for me, because if you are used to drawing, then this is gonna help you out a lot. So I just want it to be really obvious where on my face I'm doing everything. Now the cheekbone. 
again, you're going to have to feel around a little bit, but you can never, you like, don't feel bad to print out a photo of like an actual skull if that helps you. Um, we talk about this all the time in regular beauty class, but if you put your pencil up to your ear, that's going to show you exactly where to contour. Well, this line is actually where your cheekbone is as well. So um, you want to find just underneath the cheekbone. Just like that. And you want to bring it all the way in. So unlike regular contouring, you never want to bring your contour this, in, this close to the inside of your face because you can start to take on a skeletal look. Um, but in this, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to come right down. We're going to strengthen up that line. Now, this is the part where you can start to clean any mistakes that you made. You can grab a regular brush. I'm going to just be grabbing this 936 concealer brush here, and I'm going to clean up my lines. I want to give myself a little bit more room around this bone here. And I'm going to blend out the area of my face that I just drew. You can go down the middle and do that too. You're just going to blend the line out. I love Dia de los Marcos. There's a cemetery not far from my house. And every November, they have a huge celebration and everybody goes dressed up. It's super fun. That's actually why I started trying to learn how to do the sugar schools is because I thought it was just such a beautiful holiday and such a beautiful celebration. And I really wanted to commemorate the family members and everybody that had passed on. I'd gone with friends to this celebration and I just loved the art. Every, the, the greatest thing about Sugar Schools for me is that it is all about decorating, decorating the dead, decorating the people we love. And this, there's no one skull that's the same. So the good news is, is you don't have to feel, you know, scared to attempt things because you can draw flowers on your skulls, you can put glitter, you can really do whatever you want. There is no rules here. And I wanna bring this line in just a little bit. I'm gonna blend it out. Now that I've got things kind of where I want them, I'm gonna go in with the black and I'm gonna use the same exact brush. Um, we have Stila Smudge Pot and this is typically what I like to use for the eye area. It's really creamy. Um, and it dries quickly, so you don't have to worry about smudging. It really is truly waterproof, and I think that's the best, in my opinion, that's like the best part about it. I really have to use something waterproof for this area, because if I don't, if I don't use something waterproof, my eyes will water, I have allergies, they will come off, they'll get smudgy, it'll just look like I went and cried off all my eyeliner, it won't look like a skull. So I am going to really just pack this eyeliner all over. If you are in the academy, um, you'll be familiar with this technique just from our regular smoky eye. And I'm just gonna follow the lines that I already made. You will also want to set this after, so you'll see what I do to set this. 
Who knows? It is a really waterproof product though, which is another reason why I always suggest um, going in and mapping out where you want everything to be before you just decide to go crazy with it. Because if you mess up, you're not only gonna have a tr like a lot of trouble fixing it, but it's also going to be really irritating for your skin because you're probably gonna have to spend some time trying to get it off. I really like this product for the eye area, like I said, because it's nice and waterproof. But if you were to use it like on the face, be a little careful. Um, it works. The problem though is that it it can start to crack if it's in an area of your face that has a lot of movement. For example, the mouth. I would suggest using um this very sparingly if you have to do it on the mouth area. It's waterproof and you can set it, so you might have an easier time than with some of the creamier like face paints and whatnot, but um, I've tried it and I actually used it all the way down to my neck because there's a lot of movement in the neck. I had some issues. Don't forget to move your brush as you are painting. A lot of times people will just try to keep their hand in like the same position and you can't get everything like that. So you do need to kind of remember to move your, move your arm, move your hand. Again, if you are questioning how things look, feel around for your own bone structure. It's going to tell you everything that you need to know. Awesome. Now don't forget your tight line, guys. Even if you are gonna be a skeleton, or a sugar skull, whatever you're gonna be, everybody needs to have a tight line. Um, my favorite product to use is the Stila um, Twist Up Smudge Stick. We make them in Lionfish and in Stingray, which is black. For this, you would wanna use black for sure. And you really want to cover all the clear space of skin that you see poking through because that's what's going to make it look nice and realistic and it's going to give you a lot more depth. So you can see now how much better that is that I filled in my tight line and I filled in my eyelashes. There are no gaps. Everything is completely blacked out. Now um, with the Stila Smudge Pot, since it is again, so waterproof. There will be situations where you may have to stop and add a little bit of alcohol to your brush and clean off anything that's dried up because as you know, the brush can get a little stiff when the product dries. Or you could have makeup remover nearby. Um, I really love the Bioderma. This stuff is great. For removal of a really, really strong makeup though, I would recommend more of an oil cleanser for the end of the night. My personal favorite, I know it's Britt's favorite too, is the One Love Organic Cleansing Oil. It is amazing. Um, you would think that I drink it because I go through it so quickly, but I just, I always have a lot of makeup on, so I need it sometimes. Now we're gonna follow up this with a little bit of black eyeshadow from the Stila Soft Glam Palette. 
And for this, you really want to pack your pack your color on. So I'm going to be using a packing brush for this. It's a Bedellium Tools number 758. And I just want everyone to know you don't have to do black. You can do a sugar skull any color that you want. If you want your skull to have like a purple eye, then you can do a purple eye. But I'm really going in and reinforcing this black color. I'm going in with the shade Noir. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. Um, it's just super versatile. You can do glam, you can do, I mean, it's in the name, soft glam, <laughs> but you can also do anything darker. You can do really dramatic looks like this. Now, when working with black eyeshadow, you wanna be careful. It's almost inevitable that you're gonna get a little bit of fallout, but you can really save yourself some extra time and work by just tapping off the excess product. Um, and then really try and like go in and place the brush in the shape that you want it, because the less moving you have to do, the more chances you're gonna get that it's gonna stick and it's not gonna fall out underneath your eye. I mean, the good news is if you get it in this general area, it's just gonna add to your look. So the good thing about that is if you do mess up, it can be fixed. Now remember, you're trying to make it look hollow. So the deepest, darkest part of your eye, no matter if you're using blue, pink, orange, black, should be the center. And then everything should kind of fade out to where the bone is going to show. And you may have to adjust as you go. You know, sometimes you'll keep, you'll stop and you'll be like, okay, I, I need to add more color here. I need to add more color here. Like I'm doing right now. I see that this needs a little bit of help here in this spot. There we go. Moving on. So I'm gonna use the um, same thing, the smudge pot, and I'm gonna to turn to the side and I'm really gonna look for where I'm gonna to start to draw the hollow area. And usually that's gonna be like about here. It doesn't have to be a big area. Everybody kind of does it differently, but. Again, if you have like, a photo of a skull to look at while you do this, you're gonna have a much easier time. But typically there's this little hollow space between where the skull part here, like the orbital bone and everything connect to the jaw. So there is like a little hollow piece here. And remember with sugar skulls, again, it's decorating a skull. So it doesn't have to look like a perfect skeleton. It just needs to look like a very beautiful, beautifully decorated skeleton.
Usually this piece here is a little round, so I'll make that nice and round. There we go. And then it's, and it comes up like that. Great. Now you wanna kind of connect your lips just so you know where things are gonna go. So um, you can either do this with the brown pencil again, if you feel like that's gonna be a little easier for you, or you are more than welcome to just use um, the same black pencil that you were using before. So got the brown pencil back. I'm going to look at where my line of my lip naturally comes. And we're just gonna connect the area. I always like to get the basis of my skull on first and then go in and do the decorations because it starts to look a little bit more like a skull. So it makes you feel like you're, you know, you're doing something. <laughs> At first, it'll just look like lines on your face. I'm gonna get a little bit more foundation just to go over this area and make it a little cleaner. I'm mixing it with a little white. Once you have everything on here, you can just go back and start to blend out any lines you don't like. You can use this to clean up the lines if you feel like they're not as perfect as maybe you'd want them to be. I'm really going over the areas of my face that are like protruding. So I've really got this like pointy chin here. I'm gonna make that a little lighter. I'm gonna bring it all the way up. And now I'm gonna go back with my Noir and I'm gonna set the little areas here as well. I'm gonna let my face dry a little bit. The powder is also going to really help you with depth. You know, if you just draw a line, it doesn't always give you the same amount of I don't know what the word is, realism that you might be looking for. And I feel like the powder does help make things look a little bit more pushed back. It makes things look a little bit more skeletal. If you have a black eyeliner of any kind, you can use that too. There's really nothing stopping you from that. You are more than welcome to use whatever tool makes you feel more comfortable. I personally like using brushes just because it works a little bit better for me. Now it's all about the details. We're gonna go back. I'm gonna make sure that this bone does connect. Sometimes we can go a little crazy with the jaw. I always do that. And I'll have to come back and actually, you know, carve out the area where it's gonna be. Now, again, I've said this before, but be careful because when you start to use the black, it can start to blend in with things and make everything look gray. And we don't want that.
I'm really just going in here and doing some of the shading and the details. And I like to drag my brush in the shape of the bone just to give it kind of that realistic look. If you want to blend, you can. Again, I always just say, kind of figure out what your blending tool is, is going to work best for you because especially with doing something so dramatic, the last thing you want is to have everything where you want it and then go and try and blend it out and ruin it and then have to start all over. Awesome. So next I'm gonna start to draw the little lines here on my lip. Um, I love to use little brushes. I'm using a Bedallium 706, but you can also use a Bedallium 710, which comes in the brush kit that we have. Um, I just like to have as many little tiny tools as possible because it gives me more control over what I'm doing and it allows me to control my product a little bit better. Next, I'm gonna be going in with the Stila Red Lip Paint. Um, this is one of my very, very favorite products. This is in shade Beso, which is like the brightest, reddest that you can use. I'm gonna be using this on the lip, but I'm also gonna be using this on my eye. Because this is a sugar school, I do want everything to be super, super decorated and really beautiful. So I'm gonna come in here first with my 710 brush and a little bit of the red lipstick. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyebrow red. I'm gonna do it just the way you would your regular eyebrow but you're just gonna do it red to make it look like somebody decorated you very beautifully. Just like if you're doing your eyebrows regularly, if you're gonna do eyebrows and you don't wanna be lazy and just cover them up with the eye socket, then you still wanna make sure your eyebrows look nice. I'm also gonna go in here with the same lip paint and I am going to do some little designs. You can do polka dots, you can do glitter, you can do whatever you want. You can do colors. You can make your eye a flower. There are so many different variations. And again, remember there's no rules. So decorate them how you want. Now I'm also gonna come back with this red and I'm going to use it later for my lip. But for now, I'm gonna leave it here. I am gonna do a little swirly design on the side here. Again, I'm using the um, Stila Red Lip Paint in Beso. It works just like paint. You can use it as an eyeshadow primer. You can use it for blush. You can use it to blend things out. I actually used it on this eye. 
I'm just going to roll my product in it so my brush gets nice and nice and tight and I don't have to worry about any frayed edges. And then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to just draw a little swirl. I'm also gonna bring it down on my chin. You need to get more product, you can. I apologize, this fall weather has my eyes watering a lot. So as you can see, I'm all wet under here just for my eye watering. Um, and this is why I like the Stila Smudge Pot because if this was face paint, I would not be looking very cute right now. And I'm just gonna take something really small to kind of dab at the water. If you have watery eyes, you know what I'm talking about, but. It only lifted a little bit, so I can come back and fix that. And that's not gonna ruin everything like a face paint would. Just doing some little designs in the bottom here. I'm gonna go ahead and put like rhinestones at the end so you can do whatever you want here. I'm also going to go ahead and do my nose. Remember, your nose is cartilage, so you don't really have a nose. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to do this, but um, usually you could do like an upside down heart. And that's gonna work really nicely. You can even do little cracks in your skull if you want it to look like really realistic. I'm gonna do a little one right there. You do want to be careful with the nostril area because I feel like a good nose is going to make or break your skull, to be completely honest. If, you're, if your nose looks like a mouse or like a cat or something, no one's going to know what you're trying to do. <laughs> and you want people to very easily be able to recognize this. So I always like to get inside the nostril to really block it out. So it looks like I'm missing my nose. Again, we are gonna go back and we're gonna set it with some Black Noir eyeshadow. Again, when I really get that depth, it's because of, it's really because of the nose. Um, I'm putting a little bit of the eyeshadow where I want it to seem the darkest. And then you cannot forget the lips. You can go super, super exaggerated with the lips if you want to, but my advice is like, if you're not comfortable painting teeth, which I typically would do teeth, but because of time, I'm not gonna do that. Um, you're going to wanna draw lines, right? But I always think a really pretty red lip is nice for a sugar skull.
If you smile with your teeth, it pulls back your whole bottom lip so there's no like lines or creases and it makes it way easier to get a perfect lip line. We're gonna let that dry for a second and I'm gonna come in with a little bit of my bodyography glitter in later skater. It's one of my very favorite colors. I'm just taking a little tiny brush here and I'm gonna start packing that on. It's really gonna give a little extra something to my skull and you can put it wherever you want. It's gonna help me blend in the area where my eye doesn't wanna stop watering. Now that my lips have dried a little bit more, we can come in with our mouth. I like, you know, sometimes you have to go in stages because you have to let something dry before you touch it again. We're gonna start to do little lines. And as you can see, this is why I like to maintain using a small brush because it's gonna make my life a lot easier. Now I am going to go ahead and add um, a little bit of little bit more decor on the bottom here. Always do lashes. I do have some lashes here that I'm going to do as well, but I do want to tighten up my um, decorating and I do have some fallout that resulted from the glitter, but it happens. It's okay. remember you can use as many colors as you want i'm just using the colors that i have here with the um lipstick I'm also going to use a little bit in this hollow area here. I shaded it a little bit earlier, but you can't see it now that I have added some color.
I do also have some jewels. So if you have jewels or crafts or like foil or anything you want to use, you can totally do that. You can buy them at, you know, Michael's, you can buy them wherever you want. Add a little something here. So what I did was I just got some regular jewels and then I put like glue the, on them together to make them like larger, but you can do them one at a time if you want to. Now, mind you, this is an hour, like half face sugar school. So you can really get as detailed with this as you want. It's totally up to you. Oh no, some of my jewels are not right. That's okay. It happens. I think the best thing that you guys need to remember is that this is something that's supposed to be beautiful and fun. So don't expect, especially the first time you're trying it, don't expect it to go perfectly. You might mess up. You might not get it right, but it's about how you're decorating it. And again, there's no rules. So if you like something, don't let anybody tell you that it, you know, that you can't do it, but you can really do whatever you want. And you can do individual, you could do foil. That's actually one of my favorites is to do a little bit of foil. My gems are not working with me right now. <laughs> see, where should we put this one? I think we should put it on the other eye. It's five o'clock. That's my personal assistant. But that's my time, guys. So if you want to add anything, if you want to add lashes, if you want to get really, really sparkly, if you want to do the whole thing in crystals, if you want to do flowers, you can glue things on your face, you can do whatever you want. It's really up to you. This was just a really quick how-to. Um, I promise if you practice, you're obviously going to get a lot faster. You're going to get a lot better. So if you, you know, struggled a little bit today, don't worry. But did anyone do this along with me? This, oh, thank you so much, Britt. Did anyone learn anything? <laughs> Has everyone tried this? Are you trying it on your own pace right now? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? So the first one on the list, Sloan, was, um, should I always use a brush for lipstick painting? I typically take the lipstick and go directly on the face. Um, I think you should definitely use a brush for it, especially with painting. Um, and the reason is because if you're just using, I mean, if you're blending it out, I guess it doesn't matter. But if you are using something for intricate details, like if you did want to do teeth, if you wanted to do flowers, if you wanted to do something like that, you're going to want to use something like really small, something that's going to be easier. I actually use an eyeliner brush for all of my like smaller, more intricate details. Um, but again, you can also get like cheap brushes if you don't want to ruin them from the craft store. Um, but yeah, definitely use a brush. It's going to make your life a lot easier. They also make disposables. Um, that is, I like to personally use to do lips, but for anything else, always use a brush. Perfect. Um, somebody else asked, I have oily skin. Should I set my face with a powder before drawing? So I'm, I'm assuming that this is after we apply the white. Um, and then what does that do to the product, like the lipstick or the shadows, if I, if I were to set it first? So you can do this with an array of different things. Um, if you're using an oil-based product, if you're using a cream-based product, setting it with powder will actually make it so it's waterproof and you can actually continue to build colors on top. So if you were to do this, you know, with a regular lipstick, this is a lip paint. So of course it's waterproof, it's gonna dry a lot faster. But if I would have used a regular cream lipstick, um, it would have been slipping and sliding all over the place. It would 
not be perfect for me to do. So my advice there would be actually to stamp the area with powder. It could be setting powder, it could be translucent powder, um, it could be, you know, your skin tone, whatever you want to use. Just try to make sure that, you know, translucent is the best way to go because you're not going to ruin the um, integrity of the colors. Whereas if I were to go and put like a powder that was my face color, I have white on, it's going to start to tinge the color of my skull. It's going to make it um, off color. So you can do whatever you want. Again, there's no rules, but I definitely suggest if you do have oily skin to first of all, use a really mattifying primer. Um, I believe we have this Tristique um, mattifying balm in a stick to my knowledge and that works really great you can also use just anything mattifying but putting a nice little layer of powder can also help oil from breaking through some of the makeup um, but depending on what you decide to use most of the stuff is waterproof if you end up doing your whole face with the like smudge smudge bot you really don't have to worry because it is that waterproof perfect we have two more quick questions um it was, what was the One Love Organics cleanser you mentioned? Do I just use that to take everything oh off or something else? Oh my gosh. Else? So I can't even rave about this enough. Um, <laughs> this, you just, before you get in the shower, obviously you would peel off all your gems. And if there's eyelashes, you want to remove the eyelashes so that that's not going to be too difficult. But you just get a little squirt of this and it's, it's very oily. I'll show you a little bit kind of what it looks like. It looks completely clear, just like that. Here's a little bit of the makeup. You can see that's not coming off, right? That's like really waterproof. But when I go ahead and add this oil, it's going to just set there. You put it on, you let it set, and it's going to start to work on the product and start to break it down, the oils in it. The great thing about it too that I've learned is a lot of like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a huge name brand person. Like I have no problem with drugstore makeup, but a lot of the cleansers have mineral oil in them, which is not really good for your skin. And when you're using this much makeup, you've already got so much on your face. You don't want to make it harder on yourself. So I would say if you do stuff like this, you definitely need a good cleansing oil. And this one does not contain mineral oil. So I would highly recommend it. Um, I've tried off-brand ones before, and this is just my favorite. Like, I always come back to this one. But I want to just show you, now that that's been sitting there, now that it's been sitting there trying to break it down, all you take is a little bit of water, and voila. And that's pretty much how it works on your face, too. It's my very favorite product <laughs> to take everything off. Um, the jewels, you can get them anywhere. These ones I got, I believe on um, Amazon, but I've seen jewels that you can buy like anywhere. You can get them at the craft store. If you go to the scrapbooking aisle, they have them already made in like designs like this that are meant for like pages. So if you don't wanna like put one by one, highly recommend the scrapbook aisle um, at your local craft store, but they also sell gems and stuff online. The only thing I have to say that you guys need to be careful of is um, glitter. Do not use glitter from a craft store. Do not use glitter that is not meant for the eyes because it can really cause an issue. Um, what I used today was the Bodyography glitter and it's awesome because it's got a silicone base so you don't have to necessarily use an eyeshadow primer with it for it to stick. It sticks by itself. And it's made out of mica, which is first of all natural, but second of all, it's super fine and it's super soft. Craft glitter, on the other hand, if you were to get that anywhere near your eye, it's actually made of plastic. So it can cut you. It can cut up your eye. It's not comfortable. It's gritty. It hurts for you to take things off. Um, you know, even if you use oil, you'll kind of feel like you're taking sand off of the face. So my advice is to, if you're going to invest in anything, jewels are cheap, foils, uh, silver and gold foils, those are cheap. But when it comes to glitter, invest in a good glitter because you don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want to get anything in your eye. It does feel like sand in the eye if you use the wrong glitter. So highly recommend the bodyography. Perfect. I think that simultaneously answered our last question because the last question was uh, you rubbed the glitter on and you didn't pack it. So just speaking a little bit to that bodyography charm of it being so soft and cushiony. Yeah. And I can show you guys a little demo on my hand of how easy that product is. So this is just a regular eyeshadow brush. I'm going straight in here. You can do this with your finger too, by the way, but I have nails, so um, it doesn't allow me to get in the jar. <laughs> but you want to tap off your excess, you know, so you don't get fallout, but it goes on so smooth. 
This one is like black and gold glitter. So it's gonna, oh, I think I have like an eyeshadow on this one. Hold on, let me use a better, better brush. And where I don't have oil, right? There you go. Oh, just look at that. Look at that glitter payoff. It's stunning. Oh my, do you see that? Like I could bathe in this. If I could put, I could paint my whole face on this if I wanted to. Um, does anyone have any questions about the glitter? Yeah, no, definitely never use craft glitter. Like it is so bad. I wouldn't even recommend using it like even on your cheek. Like I know a lot of people do it for like Coachella and things like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that glitter somehow finds, it, finds its way into your eye, you are gonna be very uncomfortable. <laughs> So highly recommend going for the actual glitter that's meant for your eye area. Absolutely, Nadine. Always play it safe, right? <laughs> Don't believe everything you see on the internet and craft glitter can be a big no-no. Um, so definitely, we, we here at um, Bodyography, we here at Blushington always encourage Bodyography. They're a new brand that was onboarded during the summertime. It's been such a huge hit with the community. And again, like they have uh, very soft cushion pigments. Um, it's very easy to blend. And as you can see, it's like really radiant on Sloan's face. Um, so I think that is our time for today, Sloan. I wanted to thank everybody for just joining us. Um, we did drop the code for 10% off products. So feel free to use that at Blushington. Um, we will also be sending out a post-class email within the next 24 hours detailing every single product used as well as that code information and access to a video recording of this masterclass. So if you want to share it with family or friends or clientele, if you know of anybody who wanted to attend today but couldn't, definitely feel free to circulate that information. But we thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, keep up to date with us here at Blushington at Blushington and at Blushington Academy. You can also follow the amazing Sloan at the period glow pro. That's the period glow pro. Um, every handle has been dropped here in the chat as well as every single product that Sloan used. So thank you everybody. We hope you have a wonderful evening and Sloan, I'll, I'll have you have the sign off, but thank you so, so much for your time today. Yes, I had so much fun guys. Thank you for letting me do this. It was definitely a challenge trying to figure out how to teach it and do it all in one hour, but I am super proud of all of you because a lot of people were able to follow along. Um, so be proud of yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. Post your pictures, send them in, uh, go, you know, practice this with all the free time that you have. And I want to see what you come up with. So uh, have a wonderful rest of your week. And I hope that you all get out there and celebrate Dia de los Muertos on November 1st. Thank you. Bye-bye. In just 25 hours at the Blushington Academy, you'll be ready to increase your earning potential and become your own beauty boss. Blushington Academy is valuable to self-taught makeup artists and for those that went to school and graduated. Blushington is an incredible place to advance your career. The Blushington Academy is giving you all the industry secrets, tips, tricks that they know, and they are giving that to you in that 25 hour course. That's priceless. What surprised me as a new makeup artist was all of the work that went on behind the scenes. The skills I learned at Washington Academy would have come in handy 10 years ago when I first started my career. Along with the Blushing Academy, you get your own Blushington kit. The kit is curated by their artists, so you get this amazing kit that you are gonna use on every single client. Realistically, what you pay for the course, you're getting in the kit. When I first saw the kit, I was like, wow. It's rare to find a makeup academy that provides such luxurious products. So to turn up our look, let's grab our eyeshadow palettes and look at the color choices that we have. I love this palette. The colors are so vibrant and so beautiful you are so overwhelmed with where do I start? Where do I begin? How do I get my name out there? Blushington is behind you and they are gonna help you do that. You are a featured certified artist on their website. So if you're in Kansas City, Missouri, people can book you, brides can book you. Having a huge company like Blushington behind you, that is something that when you go to an, another school, you don't get. Having a shop and shop at Blushington is going to be such a game changer. I'm always recommending wonderful products to my clients and it's gonna be so nice to be able to help them purchase products that I stand behind. And it's gonna be nice for me because I'll be able to make a little extra income. You educate your clients, you use the products on them and they have an option to buy directly from you from Blushington. So that way that's commission in your pocket. Why did no one else think of this? It's amazing loneliness of the career can really get to you because you're essentially an entrepreneur building a one-person business. 
but with blush and tin, I could create community and rely on them for encouragement and for business matters. I honestly feel that this course is an amazing value. You'll have a lifetime access to a new group of makeup artists so you'll always have someone in your corner supporting you and there to answer any questions that you may come across in your career. There are so many things that we have to learn the hard way, especially as freelance artists. Blushington Academy takes away some of the pains of growing. If you are just starting or if you've been doing it for years like I have, you can never stop learning. If you are getting ready to sign up for the Academy, just know it is just the beginning of your career.